Welcome back everybody to the Elder Kings last episode. We actually finally, after what feels like many, many, many episodes, well, like, how many episodes are we up to now? 15, 16, something like that. We've finally become the independent kingdom of Nibane. Abnathan's dream realized through an entirely different dynasty that he basically bought about. But hey, there we go. King Longship, the cleansing flame of the independent state of Nibane. And I know it's something very, very funny. Uh, just before we logged in here, we've actually got Senchel under our kingdom, which is insane seeing as this one province basically funded the entire campaign up to this stage anyway. It doesn't seem right. This seems like anti-karma that we would inherit this this one place that we raided so much. But anyway, we've got rebellion going on there right now, so maybe that's the karma, huh? Riddle Thar Uprising. The goal for today, besides pushing more claims, is very simple. Grab Sancrator. Probably also grab the Imperial Isle. We can do both in the same war anyway. This Emperor's probably not long for the world anyway. Uh, oh, shit. He is severely injured. Wow, he actually might die. That's cool. Um, well, obviously not for him. But what I was about to say is grab Sancrator and try and hunt down the Amulet of Kings. We have the blood of Reem and Cyrodiil, the first empire of Cyrodiil, the guy who was able to wear the Amulet of Kings, you know, any, any Dragonborn could do that. And I think because we have the blood of Reem, we can also wear it, despite the fact that we're not actually a Dragonborn, nor have that Dragon blood. This could be big. I mean, technically we have Dragon blood because we have the blood of Reem, but you sort of get what I'm getting at. We don't have the traits, but apparently because we have the bloodline, we can still use it. This could be very, very big for us, because that means we can light the Dragon Pies. It means that we have a legitimate claim on the Empire. I've also been told old Tiber Septim, old, old, old troublemaking Tiber Septim could be likely to kick around very, very soon. So we need to be on high alert for that as well. I, I, I've sort of comment saying that basically it was guaranteed to happen this episode. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why now, you know, with the King in, Independent Nibane, maybe it's because the Cyrodiil is weakened. I have no idea. But anyway, there is a big risk associated with that. First things first, let's, let's deal with this though, because this is kind of going to be a pain in the ass. You miss out on certain events if you're at war and things like that. So it's always good to try and tidy these um, things up before we get too involved here. How much gold are we making per month? Uh, obviously, if we didn't have all of our troops there, 25 is actually not a huge amount. I was kind of expecting more, given that we spent thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands on all of these provinces. And this is what I was about to mention. We're also going to need to fabricate a lot of claims. Now, technically, this is the last claim we have to fabricate to succeed with that goal of getting the Amulet of Kings. It is actually in Sancred Saw. Now, when we use our steward to oversee construction, you see there 6.6% .6 chance yearly of Riemann tombs being discovered. If we get him, or her, him, uh, I'm sorry, I haven't got my glass on, that's clearly a guy in hindsight. Uh, if we get him to oversee construction in San Crator, then we can try and uncover those tombs. 6.6% .6 yearly means the sooner we can do it, the better, because it's going to take a very, very long time. It's obviously a very, very low chance, so ideally I'd like to get that dealt with soon. Speaking of things I want to get dealt with, how about a new rug? Because these guys, oh my god, elsewhere still exists. The main, or uh, the main looks fucking awesome, I'd like to point out. Um, what was that dude? It was that guy in, uh, kind of looks a little bit like the guy from the Fallout New Vegas DLC. You guys know what I'm talking about. The guy with the dreadlocks and the mask as well. I can't, um, Ulysses, that was it. Kind of looks a little bit like U Ulysses. Anyway, we're going to go kill these guys. I can't believe Elsewhere is still alive. Obviously, they're not going to last very long. I assume that's the main's final province. So the second that's gone, I assume he just becomes unlanded, then the kingdom's destroyed. Tidy this up, and then get clams on Sancrator as soon as possible. Then I'm pretty, pretty content to leave the claims there for the time being. Because I think the weaker the Cyrodiilic Empire gets, the more likely it is for time to set him to spawn. So I've got him on him. Oh my god. Find a nice balance between obviously expanding Nibidae as much as possible, but without risking Tiber Septim turning up. Because I've been told, I can't beat Tiber Septim. Everybody has said, you are never going to beat Tiber Septim. Tiber Septim is, very, is a very powerful man. He's a very powerful man with a big old powerful voice. I don't really want to mess with him too much. Especially seeing as our borders are a complete fucking state, and we are also 67 years old and could drop down dead any minute. So I'd rather not risk it. Uh, well, at least until we get a better economy, or at least so enough money for backup troops or something like that. Because we weren't even able to really beat the Cyrodiilic Empire without a thousand gold to our name. Oh, the Emperor died and his wife got elected. 26,000 members saw 27,000 men. Um... <laughs> Fuck it. I mean, honestly, why not? I wasn't really expecting that, but uh, yeah, let's do it. Round two, back to back, going to war with the Cyrodiilic Empire. Fine. This is going to give us the Imperial Isle, which we should definitely send all of our troops to, because not only is it now the war goal, uh, because that's one of the claims we're pressing, it's also obviously their capital, and there's also a chance we could just burn down, take family members hostage, or whatever else. Um, this is big. Now, you've also got to remember, our entire family is an absolute powerhouse when it comes for Marshall. So, even though we have almost similar troop types, I think we're still going to swamp them. Uh, because we just have that crazy amount of extra marsh king. Like, what's our son looking at like right now? 43 is actually less than I was kind of expecting here. What about our other kids? Um, oh, he's got, he's got kids. What, he's got Bastilla. 
Uh, oh, my God. Ballista. I read that as the character from Star Wars then. Um, Log. Log longships and his garbage. And then there's also tre oh, Trebuchet is incredible. 12-year-old girl with 12 marshals. That's probably genuinely better than some of the commanders the Imperial City have got there. Um, toss them in the dungeons. Leave them there. I'm not here to kill. Ooh, peasants. Although I'll kill any peasants you want me to kill if you're going to give me just. That's fine. Um, right. Let's get over to just... I'm, I'm getting my troops to reinforce here just because, A, there's war score available. What are they doing? Oh, shit. They're fighting Kavach. Right. Okay, so they're nicely distracted with Kavach. They're nicely distracted with Sylvanar, I believe that is. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, here, stop rising. What, what, why are we hostile to that? Oh, that's one of her vassals. Sorry. That's me thinking they were just like a rebellion or something, because obviously their flag looks a little bit like a rebellion flag there. She also got a 21st Cyrodiilic Riddle Thar Revolt. She has a 9th Cyrodiilic Hist Revolt. She has, uh, obviously, this the second Nibbanese war in this space of about two years here. And then, obviously, fl what? Flange Mace the Diplomat. Flange, our, what, our sister? Our cousin. Oh my god, our cousin is also at war with her. She's got Diggers Bickuses on her left and Diggers Bickuses on her right. Stuck in the middle with you. And by you, I mean it's going to be us in a second because we're going to grab this goddamn Imperial Isle. You know, I should probably merge my troops before I get too much bravado and too much uh, too much hubris here because otherwise, otherwise I can see us getting just completely annihilated. Jarl Hronga of Yarl has formed, or Jarl, has formed alliance with Jarl Fortuna, the Giving. That's great to know. Thank you. Why do I care? I have absolutely no idea. Are we in the middle of the biggest war we're probably ever going to see in this campaign? Absolutely. By the way, this random Jarl, become friends with someone. Right, let's absolutely uh, try and set this up a little bit better. We've got Zeno there, our kinsman. Also, I remember you vaguely. Um, also 28 Marshall. Then we'll go with Una, who apparently has the fucking Master of the Thum. Where are we getting all these insanely good commanders? And I guess we just take the Imperial Isle. The Imperial Isle probably hasn't had time to recover too much. Um, oh, the garrisons have actually recovered already. Impressive stuff. Oh, White Gold gives 50%. Right, and they've got exceptional infrastructure. And the, apparently she's a marshal. She is a good marshal character. Fair enough. Okay. I'll write to Chief Skagwar. My good friend Skagwar. We could be friends. And now we're friends with Skagwar. Who says I'm not a diplomat? Oh, you, you're playing way too tall with Marshu. You're not, you're not p p bonusing enough to stewardship and diplomacy. There you go. Me and Skagwar, best pals. Imperial Isle, oh, that's kind of a surprising lack of war score there. To say that that's, again, her capital and a war goal. 35%, huh? Um, oh, there's her armies. Trying to siege my poor cousin. Cousin, we're coming to help. Definitely not doing this for selfish reasons. Def she leading troops. She's leading troops right there. Um, let's try and capture. If we can capture her, that means this, this war is basically over. Can you stop running so fast? We've got, we've got like, organizers or something, right? Uh, let's try warrior movement speed plus 10%. Okay, so we should be able to catch up with her armies, because I very much doubt they've got decent commanders. The AI is not quite that clever. Right, okay, so where are they heading to? They are heading to Ni Kuyal. Okay, so we'll try and get around to Orcrest. Actually, this is still the fastest route. Okay, we've almost got them there. Um, head south to Corrin. This is kind of a pain in the ass, because I've absolutely... I, I kind of want to go for the big army, but I also know she's leading troops there. So the question is, do we go for the gamble, or do we go for the safe play? C can you... Where's she gone now? Right, hang on. Let's, let's do some scouting here. This is ridiculous. Um, study tech there. There they are. Okay, fine. A little bit of vision there. I like I love that tactic so much using your spy master to scout the battlefield. It feels a little bit scummy, but then again, you know, what else is your spy master for if not to bring you reports about, you know, where the enemy is? Shit, okay, right. We're caught by these guys, doesn't matter too much. They are heading south and they're moving a lot. We've got them. We've actually got them. Now we've taken a lot of attrition here. I don't know why. Oh, because it's their promises. I was gonna say, why the hell are they not tracking the attrition in the desert? But it's their desert. That's fair enough. Okay. Now we see how strong our troops really are. Outnumbered in their territory. We're absolutely annihilating them already. 400 losses on the first day versus our 56. We're going we're gonna to destroy them. We lost 1,800 men. They lost 13,000. Holy shit. We're going to annihilate them once again. That's why I'm saying. It doesn't matter what our troop counts are. But to be honest, last, last episode when we fought the big independence war, we probably didn't need to hire all of those troops. I think we probably could have won it just by using our great commanders. But I didn't want to leave its chance. Because obviously it was so massive and gave us so many bonuses here. Cool. Let's head back to Kavach then, see if we can take her prisoner and, and even defeating these armies will give us a little bit more war score. We've got ticking war score going anyway, so it's not as if we're uh, missing out on too much of an opportunity here. Right, go for this. Might be able to catch her and battle that one and the war instantly. Come on. I've been itching for a fight. Count Tan Tan Tanisius, I think is how you would say that, of Dirich. Kill him dead. Uh, I walk away. Yeah, we're not here to murder random men. Although, what are we? What bonuses do we get here? Um, everything is just in a war. Uh, no, I'm not here to make enemies. I'm not here to make enemies. I'm just going to chop his leg off and, and have a lifelong vendetta with this dude instead. And I'm sure he'll swear vengeance and all that. That's a, that's a much safer play. Right, let's just start sieging down like, you know, big... Oh, shit. I received letters from Count Tanisius expressing 
professional respect for my besting him in combat. What? He st a part of me still remembers fighting for my life against him at the Battle of Miss Karkand. Uh, we chopped this dude's leg off. He's now a big fan of us. Well, or at least we uh, severely injured him. I guess we just ran him through with the sword or something like that. Right, let's take out Hack Dirt. Take out the weird brethren before this all gets out of hand, huh? And then we'll just head up and go for high-value targets like the King of Level titles, things like that. Right, goodbye. Thank you. Granted, I could go for our actual war goals here, but to be honest, it's going to be roughly the same war score if we're going for, you know, the, the, the king's kick around here. Nice. I think this one's in the bag. I don't think we're going to need to say too much more about this. I don't think I need to pontificate anymore. This one is basically done. We will go for a very quickly Sancrit. Oh, no. You know what this is? You know what this is? They were fucking right. Rumors are spreading all over Nibane that the Dragonborn has just been discovered. The young man named Shalti allegedly hails from Al Alcare and has all the m markings of a military genius. He is offering to join our corps as a retainer. Uh, Shalti Longbeard, also known as Talos of Atmora, also known as, obviously, Tiber Septim. Um, shit. Oh shit, are we gonna get just annihilated now? Because this is this is how it happened. This is how Tiber Septim began. He, he became a great general working for someone and then just decided, fuck this, I'm gonna take everything for myself. Um God damn it. Are we gonna get a game over by a, a fucking event driven character? Where is he? Was he supposed to join my court? The Kelty early bit, sorry, not long bit. Oh my god, look at him. Yeah, there he is. Um <laughs> And <laughs> just like that, he's dealt with. <laughs> no way is it that fucking easy. You've got to be kidding me. I should have left him in court and then tried to assassinate him. But I saw that and I just thought it was so funny to make Tiber Septim into a fucking celibate monk. That's just... Maybe because he's Holy Order that... I don't know whether that will mess with things. I don't think it will. Probably because he's just a, a flagged character. The game will just say, hey, that's Tiber Septim. He needs to get this. Rather than checking, you know, his government type or his traits or anything like that. Although, Celibate does prevent you from landing characters because they have to be able to marry and produce heirs. So maybe we have just neutered Tiber Septim. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Obviously, we'll mark him especially interest so we don't lose him. Um, invite to court. No. Found my calling. He's happy to be a monk. Uh, we could buy a favor and then invite him back to court. I'd rather do that and maybe kill him. Because he's still going to be celibate. He's, he's still going to be celibate. It's not like he just suddenly loses that trait. Okay, so we've given Tiber Septim... We, we made him take a vow of celibacy. Now what? Um, wait. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's my courtier. Hang on. Hang on. Sons. Daughter. Trebuchet. Range Betrothal. Uh, Halty. Oh, he bid. Oh, 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 oh. This is some. This is some. Oh, he's celibate. You fucking fool. Um, damn it. Yeah, no, that was a mistake, huh? I'm sure we can get rid of that. Uh, we can just blitz him with a. Uh, uh, what if we. How can I? Maybe, maybe it'll just, maybe it'll just disappear. Maybe it'll just disappear. Maybe the game will be like, hey, it's Tiber Septim. We need to. Hmm. In hindsight. Probably should have thought of doing that first. Uh, never mind. We'll, we'll find a way to deal with that. Don't worry about it too much. Boom. Thank you. Also, uh, Nibane. Pirilal. I'd like to move my capital there if we could. Only during peacetime. Oh, because we've got to deal with a fucking Riddle of Thar Uprising. Because apparently I've grabbed some other shit kicking around. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, that's a fair point. We should probably give away some land then, huh? Wow. Uh, that's pretty fantastic. That's pretty fantastic. We've, we've picked up a whole bunch of shit here. Now we need the Amulet of Kings. And now we need the Amulet of Kings. If we play this right... I'm hoping Celibate would just disappear. I assume it, I assume it will, right? Surely you can just say, hey, I don't want to be Celibate anymore. Regardless, if we get the Amulet of Kings from Sancritor, if we end up playing as the character, which we will, end up playing as the character married to Tiber Septim, we can play as the child of our dynasty and... Did I marry her off matrilineally? Is that something else I've also just fucked up? It's not a big deal. We can just break the betrothal and obviously just redo it. Um, Predator just... Uh, yeah, I've completely forgot to say it. Sorry, break, break the betrothal. Um, excuse me. Sorry, Tiber Septim. Look, I know I'm fucking you around a bit. Go to these monks. Wait, come back. Marry my granddaughter. Wait, actually don't. I've got a better plan. I know I'm I'm pissing I'm pissing you off a little bit here, my friend. There we go. Sorry, I just had to had to flip. There we go. That's, a lo that's looking a lot better. Right. Um. Also, we should definitely educate her. Or we get Tiber Septim to educate her. That's a great idea. Uh. Yeah. You do that. That way, you know, they can sort of build up some rapport. He's also a great character. He's a good educator there. So I'm I'm fine with that. Um. 
Wow, this is this is weird. Let me let me think about what other things we could do with this guy before I completely just blitz ahead here. All right, there we go. I did a little bit of RAM restruffling quickly there because we can't play. If, if you unpause while you're that far over your domain limit, you get a lot of those provincial modifiers, the things that pop up and say, oh, zombies have broken out here and here and here. That's the new capital of Cyrodiilic Empire. You moved up into Hammerfell. That's uh, not where I'd have picked, I'll be honest with you. I guess that's the only land she's got left here. This is looking good. This is very much looking good. Uh, we have to go, let's go crush this little Thar Uprising very quickly, and then we'll move our capital to the Imperial Isle. I'm speaking with some local hunters. There we go. That's exactly why we couldn't have, uh, unpause there. Let's go take out these guys. We'll move our capital to the Imperial Isle, and then I guess the next step is overseeing construction, Sancrator. And then you can just go about and fabricate claims on the rest of Cyrodiil? Oh, what does this mean? Sources from the vicinity of Sanctuary report that the battle recently transpired there. One of the command generals were none of the Dragonborn. In addition, he secured an astounding victory, but discovered an artifact of great power in the Tomb of the Roman Emperors. Um, maybe we should steal it from him. If you sort of see what I'm... Where's he gone? Uh, we are looking for... I mean, I could just go to my granddaughter now, can't I? Uh, let's take back... Uh, excuse me. I want to steal artifacts. Oh, we can't. Oh, we can't steal the Amulet Kings. Right, okay. Um... It's not a problem. Yeah, it's not a problem. Look, look go join the Gravebeard. It doesn't really need to. He's obviously got Master of the Thum there. Um, join the Fighters Guild. I feel like we're going to get overthrown, but it doesn't really matter because he... Oh, unless he breaks the betrothal. That would suck. Ah, uh, send him a gift. Let's hope that he's a reasonable man. Uh, sway him. Uh, what if we, like, grant a landed title to him? Maybe that will break the event. I'm not entirely sure, but now I'm very afraid. Nice. There we go. Let's move capitals to the Imperial Isle. Boom. Look at that. Um, I guess there's no point going to Sancrator now, because, you know, that's it's already dealt with. Like, he's already he's already found the Amulet King, so there's nothing we're going to find there, huh? What happens if... I'm just trying to think of other strategies to try and stop Tiber Septim steamrolling us. What if we land Tiber Septim and then form an alliance with him because our granddaughter is betrothed to him? Would That, that would also work, I believe. Um... Although it might just be a war, like an event-driven war, so it would just fire it regardless of... Actually, I don't know if it would stop that. I have I've no clue how this works. Like I said, I've never seen Tiber Septim spawn. Um, oh, that we have, though, haven't we? I think we have seen Tiber Septim spawn in one of the campaigns. Oh, there we go. Um, good. Perfect. I'll wake up small hours in the morning, tear, screaming that, yeah, we're dead. We're, we're fucking dead. Fine. Boom. Oh, actually, just straight up game over. Oh. Right. Huh. <laughs> um... Not sure I like that. Yeah, no, that... Why are we game over? So what did he take? We took everything we had. Uh, I don't know what to do then. Hang on, let me think about this. I had the world's most horrible dream. It was of a, a strange Lord man stealing all my towels. Um, what if we imprison him? <sighs> what? Uh, I don't want to kill him because it's fucking Tiber Septim. Um, and I think it would be awesome to get you know, Tiber Septim bred into the family, but also, also he is going to, I mean, he's clearly going to kill us. I think we're just going to have to fucking kill him. I think we're going to have to kill him. Okay, I'll try another strategy then. Let's land him and try and form an alliance. The thing is, because it's a, an event that makes forces us to abdicate to him, I feel like it doesn't matter what we do. It's always going to, I mean, give him our previous capital. Let's give him like, I don't know, fucking Sancrator. There you go. You have that. And then we form alliance. Yes. Okay. Again, it's not going to matter, I don't think, because it's event-driven. Um, unfortunately, I've declined your proposal. I bet you have. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> I can imprison him, but obviously now he's landed. Let's just see if it does it again. Let's just see if it does it again. Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't now that we've got... Ah, oh, another son. Excellent. Hrondir. Um, welcome, young Hrondir. We'll call you Scimitar because you're not quite at the level of siege weapon. Skimitar. Of curved swords. Big curved swords. Uh, yeah. This is... I guess we're just waiting to die again, huh? Right, try to bribe him, whatever. Excellent, thank you. That's what the AI has probably been doing to our chancellors occasionally. That's the event I was talking about last time. Um, well, we seem to be... Oh, yep, yeah, there we go again. <laughs> um, I don't like the way we just fucking die, huh? What if we grant... What if we land our son? Then what happens? Like Imperial... Give him the Imperial Isle. Is this, a way, is this a way around it? He still has the Imperial Isle. Yeah, it just gives us an automatic game over. Even though we've got an heir that has land, clearly. Um, well, that sucks. No! Look, my, my glorious father Longship died under suspicious circumstances. Who, 
Who would do such a terrible thing? And why is King Tiber of Nibane, my son-in-law, now the king? Ooh, who would... <laughs> Look. This is the only way I can actually get it to work where we can play the game and not get a game over. To be honest, it is kind of cool. Uh, Tiber Septim is now matril or, or, or sorry, yeah, matrilineally betrothed to our current character's daughter. Uh, our, our father, known for his visions and his spooky dreams, gave us all of his land on his deathbed. It's, it's very suspicious, I know. Where's his capital? Is he just... Uh, Renny Wendelbeck? Okay, fine. As long as he doesn't demand the Imperial Isle, I don't really give a shit. We are now playing as Jarl Longship II of Cropswood after our father, Longship the Clans in Flame, was assassinated by, of course, we know who. Our father knew who, but we have no we have no way to prove it. We have no way to prove it. So we will we will endure and we shall we shall once again Nibane shall rise once anew under this new king. Under this new Nord Tiber. And of course he's married to our daughter anyway, so you know what? Fine. Fine. Let it let it happen. Uh, let's, let's give you a signed guardian. Do you want to, do you want to educate your 2B wife? I know it's a little bit weird, but you're also probably the best educator we've got right now. Um, so trebuchet and then Tiber. Yes, absolutely fine with doing so. Also kind of guarantees that he's not going to be a big old dick. Designate her as our heir. This is fine. This, th or maybe I should educate her myself. You know what? Let's just see what happens. Let's leave it to chance. I've, I've had so much fine control of this campaign with the, with, the, with the breeding program and the fighters guild and the educations. And I've been very, very meticulous. Let's leave something to chance. Let's, we've had a long string of very, very powerful characters. This guy's no exception. 46 Marshall, 20 Intrigue, 18 Stewardship. He is an incredibly good prodigy, tall, shrewd. He's got some insanely good traits. What are we put with part of the fighters guild? What specialization are we going for right now? I, I always feel like I have the need to check that now ever since we became a monk or whatever the hell it was last time. That was garbage. Um, I guess we'll just carry on knowing that our father was assassinated by Tiber Septim. <sighs> but look, in the long term, it's good for the dynasty because we're going to get that Tiber Septim plus glorious Diggus Bickers Julius bloodlines mixing, converging. And I assume he gets his own, he doesn't even get his own bloodline. He doesn't even get the blood of Tiber Septim or anything like that. That's a bit strange. Uh, Marshall theme, stewardship. Let's go for the stewardship. We've been wait Marshall this entire time. I guess he's fine with us taking the Imperial Isle. He has no interest in, in trinkets and ruling arguably the best province in the game. But that's okay. You know. Oh, we can actually make it our capital. So that's probably not a terrible idea. Now, what's the... Who? Why are you the Duke of the Imperial Isle? Um, oh, we just need a little bit more gold. And we can actually just straight up usurp it. Fine. We will absolutely do that. Chancellor, Marshal, Steward, Spymaster, Magister. All set up. Let's get you performing statecraft. Let's get our brother, Shuriken... Training troops just in case Tiber Septim does turn up at the gates of the Imperial City looking for uh, <laughs> looking for a, a throne, I guess. Prefect Dexius, I mean, where the hell are we going? We've got the best technology in the game now. Fine, we'll build a spy network just in case he does once again get a little bit out of hand. Proselytize. I noticed that Aureus has changed religion. What have you become, like a cult? Cult of Shagorath. Okay, fine. Oh, also led by a necromancer, by the way. Wow, this got very weird very quick, didn't it? What have we got that we can give away then? Um... So, we're Cropsford now. So, we've got Vilverin, which I don't particularly want. Um, and who are our vassals? We don't have any vassals because we're a fucking duke. All that work. All that work just down the shitter, huh? Well, we're going to get it back eventually, but it's like three generations. It's unbelievable. Fine, we'll give away Vilverin. We'll just give that to, honestly, bloody anyone will we'll do at this stage, just so we're not over our limit. Um, here, who wants some land? Do you want some land? Do you want some land? Is there, is there anyone in our court? Am I going to have to literally go to our courtiers at this stage? Because with that such a small realm again. Here, take it. It's worthless to me anyway. Weird. This is not where I saw this going. I'll be completely honest with you. But uh, I think we came out of it relatively okay. Fine, whatever. You can raise, raise, raise my other daughter as well. Just take the clothes off my back. You've already taken my kingdom. You've already taken my, my great father from us. What's, what have we got left? What is the great house diggers because is this what Abnathan felt like when I betrayed him all those days ago? I mean, even though he did rob us of everything, we can still butter him up a little bit, huh? I think the days have helped me getting to know Tiber and appreciate me better. We've passed most of our time in my palace, at uh, my palace, by the way, Imperial Isle, my palace. Planning your visit filled me with purpose. Gain 20 opinion. Let's keep him on board. Let's keep him on side, because I don't know if it'll really affect things. Maybe there's an event-driven as a story where he'll come and grab the Imperial Isle from us or something like that as well. Obviously, I can't stop that, but hey, might as well keep him on side here. Genius and... Uh, what is Genius given this? It's plus, plus four to everything. That's confusing. Right, let's usurp the county of the Imperial Isle because, you know, I feel like that's ours.
I think this is the first time we've actually seen this event. We've had a couple of characters with Blacksmith, but I have no idea what actually gives it. I guess it's just a Fighters Guild thing. We can become a Blacksmith, which gives March plus two, two, two plus two, Personal Combat Skill plus two, same track opinion plus five. It's not fantastic. Or we just gain one Marshal. I'd much rather gain the the Architect, I think it is, which gives a like a flat build time build cost modifier. It's better than the base game one. Um, Archi... When the game wakes up, thank you. Architect. Right, let's take a look. Um... Yeah, it, oh, it's, it's build cost plus 10%, but you build a lot, lot quicker. That's very, very powerful. I think, I don't know how you would get that. I, I guess maybe the business focus building the Grand Tower or something along those lines. Ah, excellent. Dear Yarl Longship the Untrusted. Did you, did you call me that? <laughs> Excuse me. Fine, I'll travel to the feast. Fine, whatever. He actually has a great work. What has he got? Oh, of course, technically in the Imperial City. Yeah, I really don't like, I, I know a lot of people that have also said the same thing, like a lot of other modders have said that, that the the current system with, actually, we're, even though we own the Imperial City, it's our province, we conquered it, we're sitting there, it's our capital duchy, we get no bonuses from it. We get no bonuses because it's the liege that gets the bonus. So if you look at us, we have no great works, by the way. Um, although I could very much argue we do fucking, anyway, it's, it's a really, really dumb mechanic. Right, show bravery in battle. Gruminaire. I guess Gruminaire is probably the, the ultimate one here. Now do we just wait to play as Trebuchet? Whose education is really fucking up. Just giving a fussy. Giving a fussy, huh? That was me thinking it would be a nice, you know, sign of sign of a, a friendship and alliance. But no, I don't fucking trust you anymore. Sorry, Tyver Septim. You're going to screw this up for me. So despite the fact that we don't actually have the bonuses from, from the, the, the Imperial City Wonder, we do get the bonus of the building of the White Gold Tower. Gives us a nice little bit of tax income there, gives us 50% garrison size, bunch of troops, bunch of different things. Now I believe, from what I remember, we can also build a bunch of shit as well. Like there's a lot of unique buildings specifically in... Uh, so this counts as a tower, which I believe is a different holding type, and there's obviously all the separate towers. You've got like the Adamantine Tower, whatever else. Counts as a separate one, allows you to build separate things in it. Now, as you can see here, there's like a bunch of other shit as well, like Cyrodiilic Goods Market. You've got like um, renovated tower structure, and it's all specifically about the, the Imperial Isle. We could sink a lot of gold into that. Now, can we still raid? Uh, oh my god, we've got a lot of troops as well. Can we just overthrow him? We genuinely could. If we really wanted to, we could, we could push our claim and take it all back. Um... He does, however, hold Ballista and Trebuchet hostage. Fine. We could take it all back. Interesting. Uh, we're a barbarian. Nice. I, d I did start a new specialization, something I thought would be a bit more useful. Um, okay. Let's let's be careful here. I don't I don't want to go to war with him. If, if we can play the long term, couple of generations, get because Nibane is primogeniture. So the second he gets a kid, it's going back to our dynasty anyway. Because, of course, he's, he might also break the betrothal though, or reject the marriage suggestion. That could be a concern. At which point, then, we, we could just declare war, right? At which point, we, we could just take all our titles back, I guess, if he does go to that extent. Let's start building up some gold, then. Um, where the hell are we going to raid these days? Oh, wait, the Cyrodiilic Empire is right there. Oh, shit, hang on. This could be this could be very powerful. Bear with me a second. Um, drop everyone down. Set some more rally points. So, let's set an Imperial Isle. So, the cool thing about this is, I think we can raid... I think we can raid the Cyrodiilic Empire. What that means for us is we can just raise our troops in our capital, put them on boats, keep the boats here, and raid every single one of these adjacent provinces, move them down into the Nibbin, raid everywhere down from, like, Breville to Leowin. This could be quite overpowered. Yep, it absolutely works. That's insane. Uh, we're also uh, the spy master for Tiber Septim as well, so if we did want him dead, it would be kind of easy to do at this point. Um... Okay, sure. So let's start raiding then. It's bringing a lot of gold. Because you've got to remember, this isn't just some random shitty provinces in the middle of, like, elsewhere. These are center, like, central imperial provinces. So these have a lot of gold over many, many different years. God knows what that means, but apparently we've also gained sympathy for every bloody pantheon under the sun. So we can just sit here, and we have a border with these provinces as well. Like, everything around Wei, we can, we can siege because it's adjacent to a province we control. And again, the boats, all we have to do is move them slightly out of port here. And then when they fill up, move them straight back into port. This is going to bring in a huge amount of gold. Um, of course, take whatever you need. Or refuse to help them. Fine, you know what? You can take, take, take whatever you need. This is fine. This is fine. We can actually get a little bit of revenge on the Cyrodiilic Empire here. For all of those goddamn times they... What was it? What was it? The round Peace. That was it. I couldn't remember the goddamn thing because I've, I've wiped it from my mind. All those times we have Brown Peas. Now we're going to drain every single bloody Septim. Well, Septim? That's not the right term for it. Obviously, they were called Septims after type of Septim exists. What are they called? Like, Gold dr Dragons, I think, is the right term for it. Good God. 229 gold. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, this is going to be 
crazy, crazy lucrative. Like, this is going to bring in... An We've sieged two promises, and the boats are already kind of half full. And that's with 508 gold as well. We've groomed an heir, did we? Who turned of age? Uh, Ballista Biggest Dick is Julius. Actually, not too terrible to say that we completely ignored it. She did become dull, but kind of ambitious. Cancels it out, sort of. All right. Um, we will, in that case, Quirita will become king. A king of Cyrodiil. No, we don't want to do that. Show bravery in battle. Become... So you want to see our spouse become a chance or build a war chest. You know what? We only rule a duchy, so we only need 500 gold for that. We could literally take the boats back instantly and succeed with that. There we go. Problem solved. Hey, good work. Nice ambition there. Uh, acquire a title. Sure, we might as well see if Cyber te te Tiber Septim is nice and generous and give something back to, you know, the guy who gave him everything in the first goddamn place. Not that I'm bitter, even remotely in the least at all. Thank you, Sancrator. We've removed trolls from. Of course we have. Why not? Let's start heading down to uh, the Nibbidon Bay then, and we can start towards Bravilla's now the capital of the Empire. That could that could bring in a decent amount of gold. Oh, shit. Building new castle in San Crator for 400 gold. Ah, I don't really want to plan. I don't plan on holding San Crator forever. I'm going to say no to that. I'd rather sink the money straight into the Imperial City. We sieged our way all the way down to Bravilla, and rather disappointing we can just assault it down. So I guess that's that problem solved. But they didn't even have that much gold here either. That's really disappointing. Okay, fine. We'll take the whole goddamn thing. We'll, take, we'll, we'll burn down the entire province. We'll just head all the way down to Leowin. Thankfully, half of these places aren't very well defended, so this is going to be very, very easy to build up an absolute fortune in gold. Now to irony. Um, right, head down. What a stupid name for a province. <laughs> well, I guess that puts that to an end then. 1,500 troops are sent after us there to try and stop our raiding, but hey, you know what? I'll take that. The Imperial City is going to get the faceless it absolutely deserves. How many emperors have we had now? And goddamn none of them have ever... Oh, just nice. None of them have ever, from the looks of it, sunk any money into getting any of these unique Imperial buildings. So you know what? It's going to change. It's going to change with House Diggers Bickers Julius. Um, man, there's barely anything at all, huh? Cyrodiil Government Market. Very expensive. Restored Imperial Archives. We've got... Um, there's so much here. Bureau of Taxation. Market Hall. Um, I'm looking for a unique building specifically. Water Infrastructure. Provides a tower with running water. Water which is used in baths, fountains, and kitchens. Morale of armies plus 10% is actually quite a lot. That's very, very impressive. Um, what else you got for me here? Military Police Room. We've got Canal Drawbridges. We need more for that. Wow, okay. And I know that in things like uh, Temple District, you can build some unique stuff as well. I believe in the or Eastern District of school right now, rather than the Arcane University, you can build all various towers in here too. Um, I think there's specific, like like Imperial Battle Mage quarters there. Um, what else can you get? What's the Seven Towers Academy? That's very, very good. Wow. There's, there's a lot to see, is essentially what I'm getting at. There's so much to see. Let's just start spending some money then. First things first, though. Let's sack our steward, because she is garbage. Who have we got kicking around? Uh, hello. I'm looking for literally anyone better than this garbage woman. Join court. Please do. Uh, Sesenius. A good, strong, imperial name. Welcome. Are we not Nord? Or at least our father was Nord. Oh, no. We're back to being Heartlander. Of course, Tiber Septim is, is Nord. How old's our... Okay, 14. Cool. Um, oh, she's so... Wow, okay, this is the character I put all my... I mean, she would have probably been better in hindsight, but I guess this character has the inheritable traits, so she's just a stepping stone to greater things. And that greater thing is King Tiber Sept in the Dragonborn. Trainer in fucking stewardship, then. Why not? We're not going to be the king anyway, so we might as well at least bring in some bloody gold into the realm. There you go, problem solved. She's going to be she's gonna be trash. Have we got a better guardian than us in that case? Because your, your skill in the area does still affect it somewhat. This dude's not bad. Expert magistrate. Is that, is that level four? Oh, it's experienced. Uh, he's actually not a bad educator. Just patient is pretty good. Obviously, shrewd as well gives a bonus to it there. And he has 20 stewardship. What's our own stewardship skill? Oh, we're still a better educator. Fine. You know what? We'll, we'll just we'll just stay where we are. Secretly convert to Alessian, Oriel, Cult of Molag Bal, or the Order of the Black Worm, because I guess all of this is... Yeah, wow, look at that. Good God. What's the Alessian faith? I guess that's the... I, I mean, would that be the precursor to the Eight Divines? Because the, the Eight Divines are still the Elven, Elven Pantheon, right? So I guess that would be whatever the hell the slaves of the the aliens worshipped. So this is pre eight divines, but I've no idea what that would be because surely they wouldn't worship the elven pantheon, seeing as the elves literally had the imperials enslaved. I don't think that'd be the case anyway. Oh my god, we're marrying our first. Oh, I thought it was our first daughter. I was going to say we're marrying our first daughter to House Tharn, but I guess not. I know I said that I was going to invest in some fancy tower-based buildings, but I literally went for steam baths because it gives morale of armies plus thirty percent, which is kind of massive here. Um, if we've got any other buildings like that, I'll absolutely take those. Or we could go for like these obviously fairly important buildings. Renowned Imperial Archive sounds kind of cool. Um, I, I assume that might even give you events I, I have really no idea here um technology spread rate also obviously very very good there um there's a lot to see levy size library and force rate plus 10 percent is huge yeah i'll take that one too 
Nice. Okay. So we've still got 1,400 gold. I might even... Ah. She finished and she is now a journeyman magistrate. That's very... That's kind of shit. Um, chance of her becoming kind. She did become kind. Would you like to marry her? Of course you will. He's a sensible lad. Sensible lad, that Tiber Septim. Boom. Look at that. Tiber is now married to Trebuchet, longship daughter. By the way, we're longship and she's our daughter. Cool. She's also our heir. Can we abdicate? Can we just... Can we just... Can we just fucking, like, give up now? Um, view ruler decisions. We can change patron deity. Obviously a bit pointless. Renounce bloodline. Pay taxes to the outer council. Get out of here. So, yeah, we can't relinquish turn. I think you have to be, like, infirm. Or have lower than, to, like, too low skills to be able to run you around. That's all right. Nothing to worry about. We can always play as this dude for a few more years. And uh, he's 50. Uh, he's 46 now. She's 16. We're going to be able to play as her for a good amount of time anyway to try and, you know, really set this uh, long-term dragon blood play let's leave it here then what an absolute mess this has been are all those episodes building up only to have tiber septim snap it away obviously we're going to get it back in like i said not next generation because then we'll be playing as queen trebuchet of nivenay so technically we're still the queen of nivenay but then after that we'll be playing as the child of tiber septim and queen trebuchet that's the big brain play right there why assassinate tiber septim when you can become tiber septim sort of Thank you for watching. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made the series possible in the first place. I apologize, my voice is still not quite 100%, so bear with me on this one. A big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Sadini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Facundo Vasquez, Fluffernutter, Fungus King, Gogla, Sarik, Jimbo, Josh Lindin, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smug, Musk Ratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Palvis Presley, Scott, Skaz, Shayok Sinclair, Sir Thorn the Swede, Stannis the Manis, The Forsaken One, T Bag Cruz, Tom Terry, and Tyler Kendall, back was back Thank you for making this series possible i think i should really go back to getting those imperial names huh because now we've we're gonna get the kingdom back we'll dish out some imperial houses i think it'd be kind of fun to keep this save game for the long term let me know think about that uh keep keep the save game and maybe come back to it with just when we whenever we form the cyrodiil empire or tamriel i guess it would be as a descendant of type of septum a descendant of house diggers bickers and then maybe play somewhere else in the map love to play as like a uh, yakudan sword singer i think would be very fun a lot of people want to see at mora and i've noticed that in at mora there are a bunch of nords kicking around as well so that could be uh like like nords not not undead uh zombies that could be very fun in the meantime let's give a shout out to everyone else who made the channel and the series possible big shout out to the twitch subs and also to Asero, adam person akari andrew wilson attila bordoon ben trope betos max better valerian chris david van diepen don don and seven easier to pronounce name exploding knees fraser brennan gabriel faulkner gabriel van Ders, gaz genji zirka gray haji dumar hancock I see the great Irish Isaac Israel Jacob Wolf Jay Lara James Barnes Jason Jose Yuan De Vries John Holiday Jordan Campbell Joseph Beard Justin Plot Justin Walters Lemon Star Lasmi Luan Thomas Luke Wallace Matthew Monty Nathaniel Lindbergh Nick Noah Gallimore Pan Samu Panther Pearl Peyton Denisar Russian Elgar Billionaire The Bloody Knight The Insane Pickle Wesley Grayson Will Wade Wolfie Yorker Zach Pella and Zico too. Thank you guys for your support. I'll see you all tomorrow for hopefully the next and final stage of the now Tiber Septim assimilation program, which wasn't really a plan, but hey, you know what? Let's roll with the punches.